Okay. Now, because I own 40 keys, can you be well behaved? Now, let's take a look at this diagram. One of the things that you needed to do is you need to find out, you should have drawn my verses around the four times of this. You should have drawn it three times when we did the mind map, because it was three times in the mind map that I had to draw. And you should have drawn the copy from the mind map capsule already. That's four times that you had to draw my verses already. There's a reason I like to draw my verses four times. It's because when you have a drawing like this, I want you to immediately recognize what it is because you draw it over and over again. So, when you are no miles, when I can draw all of the phases, so phase one, meter phase one, and a phase one, and a phase one, so phase two, meter phase, and a uh, meter phase two, and a phase three, and a phase three, three, when I can draw them without looking at the book, then I know I'm no miles. But when you draw it, and you can identify what's happening, then you know it. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Let's, let's think about it. Before we even go to the question. I can see my sentry holes on both sides. I can see that they are pulling on the chromosomes. I can see that the chromosomes are still, at this stage, replicate the chromosomes. I see one, two, three, four chromosomes. And I can see they were paired up. So they were homologous pairs, possible by race or by race of sex. And they've been pulled apart. This says to me, pulling says to me, as it says in the amoeba system, if you watch the video, anaphase A4 away. They put it away. So this is anaphase. Now my question is is it anaphase 1 or anaphase 2? This is anaphase 1. How do I know that? Because it's still replicated chromosomes. And it used to be in a pair, and it's putting the pairs apart. So that's how I know it's in a phase two. So that's a common question. What phase is it? And why is it that phase? It's pulling apart? What is it, what is it pulling apart? Full replicated chromosomes. It's pulling the pairs apart. The homologous pairs is pulling it apart. And that's why it's in a phase one. Okay. And remember, you leave out the one. You don't get marked. Okay. You've got to say anaphase one or anaphase two. Otherwise, you lose the mark. Okay. Then, let's go to the next question. Now, read this question very carefully. What type of cell division? Not what phase. I'm not asking you the phase. They're asking what type of cell division. What two types of cell division are there? There's mitosis and there's meiosis. This is meiosis. Okay, meiosis. Which phase is depicted? And the phase one. Okay. Provide labels for parts labels two and three. They've been very nice to you there. Normally they trick you because they just ask you what is two or what is three. And they expect some of you to swap the two around. Now immediately, because they're asking you what is two and what is three, you already know that the two are different. And that two is the central mirror, and that three is the century hole. Please don't swap the two around. Because usually they will only ask you what is three or what is two. And it's a common mistake than to swap the two and say this one is a centromere and that one is a centromere. Okay. Now, what process resulted in the exchange of the segments? You see there was an exchange happening there and over there and over there. What process resulted in the exchange of segments labeled one? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is crossing over. When does it happen? It happens during prophase one. In prophase one, crossing over happens. The crossing over happened there. There was an exchange of genetic material. It causes genetic variation. That's the aorist, genetic variation. Now, I want you to be very careful. 
Okay, let me remind you of this, if I haven't said it to you already. That if we talk about crossing over, the process is crossing over. But they could have also asked you, what structure could have caused that? And that would have been a pyrasma. Let me explain to you what the difference is between a structure and a process. What am I doing now? was crossing over. The structure was a chiasma. Now, people, then, explain why the process mentioned in 3.4 is important. I told you already a month ago, it creates genetic variation. It is one to make sure that your siblings, younger sister, whoever they are, doesn't look exactly like you unless you are their children, which we will discuss later, please, not now. Okay, so luckily for me, this happens. Because if I had to have one more of my daughter's brother, my smallest one, I would have had an only child. If he was the first one, I would have had an only child. So now he came first and then my former brother. And then only after that did we get enough the last style that gets away with it. That's it. Okay. And it literally, because he knows he gets away with it, he, he tries everything. So luckily there's genetic variation between them. Okay. Now, refer to the diagram below that shows two cells dividing by homoousis. So they're being very nice to you this time. They're actually telling you that it's my host. Okay, so you, there's no confusion about is this meiosis or mitosis. Okay, so this is meiosis. I already see that there's two cells, and because there's two cells, I already know I'm in meiosis two. I don't know which way in meiosis two yet. We're going to take a look at the moment, but I want you to notice that I have single pairs lining up on the equator. I've got single ones. Practicing. I've got single chromosomes lining up on the equator. And because it's not in pairs, because it's not pairs, I then the know that this is metaphase, this is in the middle of the cell, metaphase, and metaphase two, there's two cells already, so there's two cells already, and both of them, and um, they are lining up on the equator as single a single chromosome. Let's take a look at how many chromosomes there are. When I count my chromosomes, a very important step when I'm counting my chromosomes, ladies and gentlemen, is the following. Count the centromeres. Never count the legs, never count the chromatids, because that might confuse you. You want to know how many chromosomes there are in a cell? Count the centromeres. One, two, one, two. Two in each side. So how many chromosomes? Two. <laughs> Please, be careful of that one. It's a common mistake. Forget it, therefore. But we're not counting the chromosomes. I'm counting per cell. I'm counting the amount of chromosomes in a single cell. I'm not going to count into two cells. Okay. In a single cell, there's only two. Okay, so be careful of that. This is already happening. The, the, the cell at the beginning of this would have had four. Because the moment I got into my host is two. Prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase, telophase two. I'm happy. I'm half of what I used to be. Okay. Which phase is it? Okay, so this is, as we said, metaphase 2. Give two visible reasons. There's two cells already, and they are lined up at the equator, and it's single chromosomes lining up on the equator. 
Why do some properties have different colors? Because crossing over took place. The crossing over took place already. There's different colors for each of these ones. So crossing over took place. Do you think that these cells were taken from a human? A human has forty chromosomes in a normal cell. And it has 23 chromosomes in a divided cell, like a sperm cell or an egg cell. Are there, are there 23 in there? Are there 23 chromosomes? No, there's two. So is it human? No. Okay. No. We, we wouldn't know. We wouldn't know. There's, um, I, I actually don't, I actually doubt that there's actually organisms with only two chromosomes. No, not even insects all have that 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 feed. We normally oversimplify these diagrams. Okay, so just be aware of that. Just know that it's not human. Okay. And also remember that the number of chromosomes is not the only thing, not the only thing that limits uh, that determines uh, what you look at or what you are. Okay, it's the total inside those chromosomes. So it's not just the number of chromosomes. Uh, so you might have another. Uh, in fact, I think um, if I remember correctly, it was either there was some type of being or some type of peanut, a certain species of peanut that actually also has 46 chromosomes. But of course, the genetic code on the inside of those 46 is different. Okay. Now, people, if these cells were taken from an angiosperm. Name the two parts of the flower where this type of division would occur. Now, I don't... It's very rarely that you see a question like that. But they do take you back to grade 11. They do ask you a little bit about the grade 11 notes. Not that we have it. Not that we say to you, go and study those things again. Uh, just normally they would ask, in the human, where would these, this division occur? In the testes? Yes. Or in the ovary, if you're female. In, in the angiosperm, it would have been the stamen and the ovary. Okay, the ovary and the stamen. Now, explain why my hostess is important for the survival of a human. People, it creates genetic diversity. It creates genetic diversity. It creates Haploid, uh, a genetic diversity ensures survival of the fittest when the environment changes. It also reduces competition. Another factor is that it creates haploid gametes that when they get together, they can form a diploid zygote that's going to form a diploid organism. Now, later in this section of the we're going to briefly discuss what happens if we don't and we get something that we're going to get that is polyploid. Not haploid, not diploid, but has three sets or four sets or more of chromosomes. And all these other things are in fertile. So I don't need to get any further than that. Okay. I want to stop our recording here or pause our recording.